Uh, hi class, this is Professor Smith. I'm going to be doing a movie on tree diagrams for conditional probabilities. Recently, Hector ran for president for a local school board. Of those who voted in the election, 80% had a high school diploma and 20% did not. Hector got 55% of the votes of those with high school diplomas, while he only got 25% of those without high school diplomas. Let D denote the event that a randomly chosen voter in the school board election had a high school diploma, and D complement denote the event that a randomly chosen voter did not have a high school diploma. H is going to represent the event that they voted for Hector, and H complement denote the event that a randomly chosen voter did not vote for Hector. Fill in the probabilities to complete the diagram below and then answer the question that follows. Do not round any of your responses. In order to fill in the probabilities to complete the tree diagram below, we're going to need two formulas. And the first one is the complement rule which states that the probability of an event A is equal to one minus the probability of A complement. You can barely see it, but there is a horizontal line above the A, which means A complement. The second rule that we're going to use is going to be our multiplication rule. And it says that the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability, oops, that's supposed to be B given A. So let me fix that. So those are the two rules that we're going to use in order to fill in this tree diagram. We'll notice in this example, we have the probability of D is equal to a particular value. And then as I scroll down, you'll see that the probability of D complement is a little bit further down, which is 0.2. So we know that these two probabilities must add to one because having a diploma or not having diploma, those are complementary events. The complement rule says if you take the probability of D, it should equal one minus the probability of D complement. So if we do one minus 0.2, that will give us the probability for D. You can also think of the numbers as money. If you have a dollar and you take away 20 cents, that's going to leave you with 80 cents. So it's going to give us 0.8. Similarly, H and H complement are complements of one another. So we know from the tree diagram that the probability of H, given that they have a diploma is 0.45, then the probability, pardon me, a probability of H complement, which means they did not vote for Hector, given that they had a diploma is 0.45, we know that the probability that they did vote for Hector given a diploma is gonna be complementary. That means when they add those two values up, they're gonna equal one. So let me move my rule up a little bit so you can see better. So that means that these two values should add up to one. So those two should add up to one. So again, if you think of it as money, you can just say, well, if you have a buck and you take away 45 cents, how much do you have? Or you can use the Alex calculator and one minus 0.45 is 0.55. Similarly, when we scroll down a little bit further and let me again move my rule up. I know that these two values are also complementary. This is now that I'm on the tree branch that's talking about where they did not have a diploma and then voting for Hector or not voting for Hector, given that they don't have a diploma. We know that ha voting for Hector and not voting for Hector are complementary, so these two are going to add to one. So if we take one minus 0.75, 
or think of it as money. If you have a dollar and you take away 75 cents, that's gonna leave you a quarter. Or you can use the Alex calculator. I hit the undo button, replace the four with a seven, and I have 0.25. So those three branches that we filled out, we used the first rule, which was the complement rule. Now we're going to take advantage of the other rule. Let me move my complement. It, it, it didn't move. <laughs> there we go. Now we're going to use the multiplication rule. We see here that we have this symbol, the probability of D and H. So that's why we're going to use the multiplication rule. So the probability that you had a diploma and you voted for Hector is going to equal to the probability that D you voted, excuse me, probably D that you had a diploma times the probability that you voted for Hector given that you had a diploma. So we're gonna multiply these two that are on the branch together. So I'm gonna take this guy and multiply it times this one. They're on the same branch together. So we're gonna take 0.8 times 0.55. So 0 0.8 times 0.55, or I can also use the keyboard. I don't have to use the mouse. So 0 0.8 times 0 0.55, and when I do that computation, that gives me 0.44. Now I'm gonna go along the other branch. So as I go along the other branch, that means I'm going to multiply these two together. So now I'm looking at the probability given they had a diploma and they did not vote for Hector. So I'm gonna multiply those two together. So I'm gonna hit the undo button and change that 0.55 to 0.45. Hit the enter button and I have 0.36. Copy that value, control C or command C if you're on a Mac, control V or command V if you are on a um, Mac to paste. Similarly, I'm going to now find the probability that they did not have a diploma and they voted for Hector. So now I'm going to multiply again. So I'm now on this branch. So I'm going to multiply 0.2 times 0.25. I'll hit the undo button, change that 0.8 to 0.2, and change that 0.45 to 0.25. And I get 0.05, control C to copy, control V to paste. Now I'm on that last branch. So now I'm going to multiply 0.2 times 0.75. So I'll select the undo button, change that 0.2 to 0.75, and I have 0.15. And then to make sure that I have the values and they are correct, all of these probability values should sum to one because I've covered all the three, pardon me, all the possible outcomes. Diploma voted for Hector. Diploma did not vote for Hector. No diploma voted for Hector. No diploma did not vote for Hector. So those are all the possible outcomes. So if I add all those values up, 0 0.44 plus 0 0.36 plus 0 0.05 plus 0 0.15, when I add all those values, I should get one and I do get one. Now, if there was some rounding error, if we didn't have the values where they might've repeated, I might've gotten something like 0 0.99999 or 1.0001, but if I, there was no rounding, it should equal one exactly. And if there is rounding, it should be close to one.
So we know that our arithmetic is right. So now we need to go ahead and answer the question at the bottom. So as we scroll down, we have the question, what's the probability that a randomly chosen voter voted for Hector? So we wanna know what's the probability that they voted for Hector? Well, to vote for Hector, that means that that's the event H. So I'm going to look here and see what are my events H? Let me erase my rules there. So here I have an H, and that's the case where I had a diploma and voted for Hector. And here I have an H, that's the case where I did not have a diploma and voted for Hector. So I need to add up these corresponding probabilities. So I need to add 0.44 and 0.05. Zero 0.05 plus 0 0.44, or if we think of it as money, if we have 44 cents and five cents, that leaves us with 49 cents. So on this last question, you can always determine what the answer is by looking at what they're asking you for. They might say, what's the probability that a randomly chosen voter did not have a diploma? So if they ask you if they did not have a diploma, you say, well, what represents didn't have a diploma? That would be D bar or D complement. So that would be this one that represented I did not have a diploma. And I've used blue ink this time. And this one, oh, which, you know, they're not going to ask you that, really, probably, because that's this one. <laughs> uh, the did not have a diploma is point 0.2. Yeah, and if you add 0.05 and 0.15, you'll get point, um, two zero, which is kind of cool. All right, but there is, or they might have asked you instead of uh, uh, voted for Hector, did not vote for Hector. So let's say if we did not vote for Hector. So if we did not vote for Hector, then um, that would be this one and this one. That means had a diploma and voted for Hector, did not vote for Hector, did not have a diploma, did not vote for Hector. And what's beautiful about this problem, it uses all the rules of probability. This is uh, voting for Hector. So there's two ways you could have voting for Hector. Having a diploma and voting for Hector, that's this case here. Not having a diploma and voting for Hector. Those are mutually exclusive events, so it's one or the other. And there's a rule that says when you have the probability of A or B, it's the sum of those probabilities. So that's why we added up the 0.44 and the 0.05. So I hope this movie on tree diagrams and for conditional probabilities was helpful. Let's check our answer. And then I might do a part two, but I think you'll be okay with this. It might have timed out. All righty, and they said, good job, or did they, did it time out? I don't know what it did. Here, let me try one more time. Oh, it says next topic, so that means, yeah, we got it right. All right, thank you so much, bye-bye.